Okay, guys, derivatives of inverse circular functions. Uh, the next exciting instalment in our series on differentiation and all related things. Okay, let's have a go at this. Now, we're going to work out the derivative of y equals inverse sine x over a, the inverse sine function, where x, as you recall, goes from minus 1 to 1 inclusive and y goes from minus pi on 2 to plus pi on 2 inclusive and y is the angle whose sine is x over a in this instance, right? We better just have a look at this. Let y equals the angle whose sine is x over a. Let's draw a triangle. The magic triangle has appeared again to help us. Thank you, magic triangle. Now we've got y is the angle whose sine is x over a. That says pictorially what that says. Do you get me, guys? You need to, You do need to get me with this, okay? Right? So there's uh, the third side by dear old Pythagoras, who's our honorary guest again in this, uh, in this video. Does that make sense? Yes, of course it does. That's Pythagoras' theorem for the third side of the magic triangle. Now, armed with that information, you watch this. Therefore, we can say that sine of y, can't we? Sine of y, looking at that diagram, sine of y equals x over a, can't we? Yes, we certainly can. And furthermore, we can say, therefore, x is equal to a sine y. Now we're going to do our little dx dy trick, like we did in the previous video on, uh, on uh, derivatives of uh, functions where you've got x as a function of y. We're just going to continue on that theme. Watch. dx dy would be, what would it be? a cos y. Yes, it certainly would. And therefore, we know that dy dx would be 1 over dx dy, which would therefore be 1 over a cos y. Now, what if we wanted dy dx in terms of x? Yes? Well, we do in this instance. We do want it in terms of x, okay? So what do you do? How do you get rid of this cos y? And it's as something in terms of x. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you look at the wonderful, marvellous spectacle before us, which is the magic triangle. And you say, because of y, what is it? Well, it's this over that. And that's in terms of x. So you just plug and play. Yeah, there it is. Because y is equal to that. And now... We're going to substitute for cos y into equation. Where's equation star? Where are you, equation star? Um, oh, didn't I put a star on it? Oh, dear. Oh, yes, I did. Here it is. There. Yes, there. It's okay. So let's go for it. So therefore, dy dx will be 1 over a cos y, which is 1 over a, and there's cos y, right? Now, the a is cross out and I get this marvellous result, truly marvellous result in terms of x. Ain't that grand, yes? So therefore if y equals the inverse sine of x over a, in other words if y is the angle whose sine is x over a, therefore dy dx equals 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared. Yes, thank you Mr. Box. So therefore, and it also follows guys, that if, if a is 1, so if you were doing the uh, y is the angle whose sine is just x, then we're just going to take this version and make a 1, right? So that's a 1, and that's a 1, and you get this. If y is the angle whose sine is x, dy dx is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Yes, that's terrific. Now I want you to remember that. Remember it and remember it well, okay? All right, examples. So this is an example of uh, one of these inverse sine ones. We're supposed to differentiate uh, inverse sine of x over 5. Well, that should be pretty easy. Goodness, because 5 is a. Like, uh, yeah, because that's the formula there, isn't it? Yeah? So we can just plug straight into here, I would have thought. Um, and let's see whether we do that. Oh, there's another one. Okay, so that's, uh, that's a different one. Inverse sine of 4x. All right, let's go for it. Here's A today. Uh, y equals the inverse sine... Uh, ang y is the angle whose sine is x over 5, therefore plugging straight into the formula. My goodness, how easy is that? So it looks like it's 25... Uh, yes, it's 1 over the square root of 25 minus x squared. And that's our answer. Yes, thank you, Mr. Box. What about number four? Uh, number B, I mean, with the 4 in it? 
Now that's pretty interesting, guys. This is going to be, you see, look, this is not an x, it's a 4x, isn't it? So we could say it's 4x over 1, couldn't we? 4x over 1 and kind of adapt this uh, formula here, except that we'd have to use the blob technique, yeah? This is really Mr. Blob, because he's not x, he's 4x, so therefore chain rule. Chain rule, chain rule is going to happen. Yes, never fear, my children. I will lead you through the mathematical swamp. Right? Here it goes. So therefore we call it uh, inverse sine u, where u is 4x. No problem. Therefore, d, uh, yes, uh, hang on, d, y is equal to the angle whose sine is u over 1. Therefore, dy du is, uh, yes it is, and what's du dx is, is what? Yes, it's 4. So come on, let's, let's hit it with the chain rule. By the chain rule, we know that dy dx is dy du times du dx, and we just plug and play. And play is the operative word, guys, because this is fun. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> I heard that. It's 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. That's dy du, and that's du dx. And what's u? What is u? u is 4x. So we plug that in. And what do we get? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. That was fun, it, uh, and you were able to work it out, weren't you? Yes, of course you were. There you go. Voila! Let's do another one. This is uh, We're going to do uh, inverse cos and then inverse tan, okay? Now, in this instance, let's go with this. We know that uh, y is the angle whose cos is x over a, where x, again, uh, goes from minus 1 to 1 inclusive, but uh, the y for inverse cos goes from naught to pi inclusive, yeah? All right, I think we need a magic triangle. Thank you, Mr. Magic Triangle. So in this case, y is the angle whose cos is x over a today. Now we need the third side. Thank you, Mr. Pythagoras. Where are you? Oh, there he is. That's excellent. Now let's do this exactly the same analogous procedure to work out dy dx. So we know that. What do we know? We know that cos of y equals x over a, don't we? Yes, therefore x is a cos y, and dx dy will be minus a sine y, because the derivative of cos is minus sine, isn't it? Yes. Now we have to get dy dx, so it'll be 1 over dx dy, which gets us that. Now, we, we want to get this in terms of x. So, come on, what do we do? We go to the magic triangle again, and we say, look... What is sine of y? Well, it's this over that, isn't it? Isn't this exciting? Yes, Mr. Star Equation. So now we'll uh, get in. We'll get um, all this happening. We need dy dx in terms of x, not y. We know that sine y is that, just from looking at the magic triangle, and therefore we can plug that into equation star. Yes, and we'll go far. So we've got a uh, sub for sine y into equation star, and we get this now, a little bit of cancel rooney happening there. Yes, and we get this result. Isn't that marvellous? It's the same result as actually for inverse sine, except there's a minus, as a minus one, okay, instead of just a one on the numerator. So that's fine, isn't it? So there it goes. So if, if uh, y equals inverse cos of x over a, then dy dx is minus 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared. And if a was uh, 1, yes, what would that formula become, guys? Have a look, have a look. Yes, you got it, you got it, okay? Very good, so that's the second of three. Now we're going to now do an example. Differentiate, oh goodness, Inverse cos of 5 over x. Well, that's pretty crazy. That doesn't look like our formula, does it? I think this might be another case for Mr. Chain Rule, don't you? I think we're going to have to call this thing blob, don't you? In other words, u or something, don't you think? I think so. And then chain rule it. So, it looks like y is uh, inverse cos of 5x to the minus 1, yes? We'll call that, yes, of course we will. We'll call it inverse cos of u, because this is confusing us, isn't it? So we just call it u, or blob, uh, disguised uh, or renamed as u, and u is 
5x to the minus 1, isn't it? Good. Now we can do it. No problem at all. So dy du, now remember, if this is just in, if this is basically inverse cos of u, dy du is basically just exactly what we got down here, except with u's in there instead of x's, isn't it? Yes, therefore, and also u is actually 5x to the minus 1, so what is du dx? Yes, it's minus 5 times x to the minus 2. So now come on, chain rule at the ready. dy dx equals dy du times du dx, and we get that. That's the dy du, that's the du dx. Now we just need to plug the, uh, back into here in terms of what Mr. U was. Now, there's going to be a very, very exciting result coming here. I'm just going to give you a sneak preview. Are you riveted to the edge of your seat? Uh, have you? Because I'm going to show you something gobsmackingly interesting. Here we go. I'm going to simplify this. Sub back for you in terms of x. Yes, thank you. Mr. Computer will do that. And, oh, it looks pretty gooey, doesn't it? Well, it's minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus now. Ooh. Okay, so that was 5. U was 5x to the minus 1, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so that's 25x to the minus 2. That's good. Times the uh, chain ruley thing from there. Okay, that's fine. I'm happy so far. But this is a bit of a worry. I think we need to sort that a bit, don't you? Why don't we call that 25 over x squared instead of 25x to the minus 2 and, and then uh, do a bit of a fiddle around in that square root sign? Yeah? That's good, isn't it? Yeah, I've, I've, I've said 1 minus 25x squared and then I've put it over a common factor. See? That'll be x squared minus 25 all over x squared now. Uh, what's Where's the rest of it? Oh, oh, I see, that's all right. Now, oh, quick, quick, I've preempted the wonderful gobsmacking result. I should have rolled the drums for you. Roll the drums, guys, roll the drums. You ready? Yes, good. Now, see this x squared coming, I want to get that out of the square root sign because it's a square, right? So what does it come out of the square root sign as? Does it come out of there as an x did you say yes? Because if you said yes, oh dear, I've got an awfully rude shock for you. Here it comes. Look, that means that is the positive square root of x squared. And the positive square root of x squared, the positive square root of x squared is mod x, mod x, okay? Because mod x is always positive, right? If x was negative and you squared it and then took the positive square root of the result, you would still get a positive answer. That's why it has to be mod x. Isn't that interesting? Yes? Yes, it is. Now, we just need to simplify. And there's still, there's still something else. Even more <laughs> jaw-droppingly exciting coming out of this. I'll just fix it up a bit first. Right, you get that? Now... Ladies and gentlemen, is that the answer, or can you even do more with it? Well, as you might have guessed, I've got another trick up my sleeve. And this, look, look at that x squared. Now, let me ask you a question. What is mod x times mod x? What would you get? <laughs> yes, you would get, you would get x squared. So I can express x squared as mod x times mod x. You think about that. Yes, even if x was minus. If x was minus, then mod x times mod x would simply be the positive values of x if it was negative, for example. Multiplied together, you'd still get x squared. So mod x times mod x is equivalent to x squared. And now I did that so I can cancel top and bottom. Isn't that something? So our answer is that. Now, there's a bit of learning in that stuff. I think it was a very exciting example to pick, even if I do say so myself. Yes? So let me ask you again. What is the positive square root of x squared? And don't say x. It's mod x, yes? And you use that for your methods course as well. Um, there's some very sneaky questions the examiners can put in in, regarding to, in regard to that. So you need to know the positive square root of x squared is mod x, yes? Okay, well, more excitement in store. For tan now, tan's the man. So we've got y is the angle whose tan is x over a where? 
x goes from, well, that looks a little wrong. Excuse me, don't look. My goodness, what's the world coming to? I, I had, I see, I, co I copied and pasted, I cut and pasted from the previous page, and I fixed up, I changed <laughs> inverse cos to inverse tan, and then I forgot to change the domain. Oh dear, because I was on the train <laughs> going down to see my mum when I wrote this and um, I must have got a bit carried away with the wonderful jostling of the train carriage and the the uh, marvellous nature of the ride so I just forgot to change the domain. So will you forgive me? Thank you. So that's uh, the derivative. We're doing the derivative of y equals inverse tan of x over a. In other words, y is the angle whose tan is x over a today. Hooray, let's go. There's y is the angle whose tan is x over a. And there's, where's the magic triangle? Thank you, magic triangle. Now, come on, now you know how to do this now. Maybe you should pause the video and have a go at it yourself. That would be a very productive exercise. So I'll just wait for a moment while you maybe pause the video and have a go. All right, you're back? Okay, how did you go? Yes, well, there's the third side. Okay, so what are we saying? We're saying, therefore, tan of y equals x over a, doesn't it? Therefore, x is a tan y, therefore, dx dy is a sec squared y, isn't it? It is, indeed. Therefore, dy dx would be 1 over a dx dx dy, which would be 1 over a sec squared y. There's star equation. Now, we have to get rid of this y. We want the thing in terms of x. So, therefore, what is sec y? Well, what is cos y for a start? Don't do sec, do cos, it's easier. So, cos y is a over that thing, isn't it? Therefore, sec y is that thing over a, isn't it, today? Hooray, and we're going to do this. There it goes, sec y is that, therefore, sec squared y is that thing. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It does, indeed it does. Now, let's go for it and see what we get. We're going to substitute for sec squared y into equation star and see what we get, yeah? Here it comes, dy dx is, oh, well, my goodness. Yes, yes, I can see that some more cancellor rooney going to happen. And what do we get? We get that. That's what we get. That's the, that's the formula. That's the formula for the uh, derivative of uh, y equals inverse tan x over a. Okay, so there's no square roots in that one. That's a bit different. And there's an a over the, on, on the numerator, whereas in cos and sine inverse, there was no a in the numerator. So there, tan's a little bit different because tan's the man. So here it comes. If y is the angle whose tan is x over a, then dy dx is a over a squared plus x squared. And there's a plus there. Did you notice that? There's a minus in the sine and cos versions, yes? Now, if a was 1, what would it be, guys? Yes, it would be that, wouldn't it? Okay? Now, we're fully equipped to have a go at this now to Mr. Tan the man. Examples. Okay, so we're going to differentiate that thing. Well, that's all right. Look, this is just Mr. Blob, okay? Mr. Blob will rename him as you or something and then deal with him via the chain rule, won't we? You're well used to this now. Okay, let's go. So y is the angle whose tan is that thing now. Therefore, we're going to call that thing um, u. Yes, where u is that. Now, come on, dy to u. What's dy to u? What is it? According to our rule, it's from down here u over 1, so we can call the a a 1 in that instance, can't we? So it's going to be 1 over, there's a, a squared, so it's 1 over 1 plus u squared, right? And then we also know that u is that, so we need to use, we need to get to u dx. There it is. Now we can do our chain rule today, can't we? We can. There it is. dy dx equals dy du times du dx, and plug and play. And what do we get? Now, that's beautiful, isn't it? Nice, isn't it? So we'll just substitute for u now. Oh, good gracious. Yes, okay. And that looks fairly ugly, but... Um, oh, yeah, I don't think I'd bother sim uh, simplifying that much more. I mean, that's going to be a quartic, for heaven's sake. Mm, there's not much point, really. Not really. No, just a big mess. So we'll just leave it like that, shall we? There you are. Did you enjoy that? I'm sure you did. Now, I think uh, we're nearly done now. We're just going to do a summary for you. Here it comes. If y equals inverse sine of x over a, then dy dx equals that, as we saw. And if a was 1, we got this version of it, didn't we? Yes. What about inverse cos now? 
Yes, we got that, didn't we? Exactly the same as inverse sine, except there's a minus sign there, right? So, if y equal that thing with, uh, with the a equals 1, we just get that version again, just with the minus there, exactly the same as the top uh, line above, except that we've got a minus, yes? Now, tan's a bit different, yeah? So, therefore, yeah, that's the version for tan, inverse tan of x over a. You get a over a squared plus x squared, no square root sign, a on the top instead of a 1. Yes? Good, and that's what happens if a is equal to 1. Isn't that right? There it is, guys. There it is. And you're a star and you'll go far. Of course you will, if you practice. So, um, that was it. I uh, hope you got something out of it, and we'll see you in the next exciting instalment. So, we'll say bye for now.